Today we're at a station built as part of the first deep tube railway in London. It's had many facelifts over the years, but today we're here to explore it for the very first time. We are at Stockwell. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Hidden London Hangouts. Today we're at a really cool place, it goes right back to the origins of the deep tube in London and I think our team discovered a whole lot more than they imagined was there. Obviously we are at Stockwell. I don't do this on my own, I've got three wonderful folk from the London Transport Museum to help guide our way around and give us a laugh as well. City's not here today, she's in the films but she's not with us today. So first of all, Chris Nix, Forgive me, by the way, Chris, I was celebrating my birthday last night. I'm a little bit husky. I'm not even sure as I'm alive anymore. Uh, well, many happy returns, Alex. And uh, I like to think of you as a little horse rather than a little husky. <laughs> you know, I don't quite know what I am today. Laurie Hilton Brown, you know exactly what a good party's like. Forgive me. I'm a little bit, you know, today, Dr. Footlights. I, I think you're doing exceptionally well and um, many happy returns. I hope you're enjoying your time over there. And um, I mean, any episode where Chris starts off the record where he goes, brace yourself, guys, brace yourself, you know it's going to be exciting. Brace, brace is exactly what we should be saying. So uh, without further ado, Stockwell, Chris, I know we talk about it in the film, but literally nutshell history of this stunning station. Well, it, of course, begins with the City and South London Railway in 1890, uh, when this station opens as its southern terminus on the 18th of December. Uh, gets a modification in 1924, when the whole uh, City and South London line is being opened out, its tunnels expanded to a standard gauge, and uh, extensions are going on elsewhere on the line. So the station gets a remodel uh, with Stanley Heaps and Charles Holden uh, in that year and reopens on the 1st of December 1924. At that time, they remodeled the station to have escalators which plunge straight through the former lift shaft of the station uh, and the, the Figgis architectural design uh, of the original station is swept away. We then wind forward to 1971, when on the 23rd of July, the station uh, opens in the form that we know it today. Extra set of escalators added and the Victoria line interchange with the Northern Line stations uh, is created. And from there, we're probably best viewing it in the station itself. Absolutely. So we've got a few photographs to come a bit later on. First of all, let's look at the film, City and Chris, uh, when exploring in this place and as I say brace yourselves because no one really imagined what is down there until they got there and now we know this is a kind of like a London Bridge moment where we suddenly thought wow look at what we've got take a look at this. Now this station looks very different from what it looked like when it first opened. It did not that we were there of course but no. we've seen the photos. Well this uh, is of course the original terminus of the City and South London Railway opened in 1890 and would have had a lovely lift and, an and, 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 a, and a dome at the top. That's right so a pair of 50 person lifts mm. uh, originally operated by water they were hydraulic lifts. Yeah that's amazing. But then 1st of December 1924 mm -hmm. Uh, along comes a new design by Charles Holden and Stanley Heaps. The, 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 the very interesting duo. Indeed. Yeah. And that put the newfangled escalator straight through that lift shaft. Mm -hmm. Now, wherever that happens on the system, we get excited, don't we? Yeah. There's got to be some remains of that original lift shaft, or at least some parts of it that we think are, are below ground. So. And the best thing you can do in these circumstances is find the plan. And mm. there's a bit just here that we're quite interested in. So there's the original lift shaft. There's the two escalators cutting straight through it. There's a few things that spring to mind. I noticed that says signal cabin. Mm, that's interesting. But I'm zoning straight in on this passageway yeah. to the original staircase because yeah, we've yeah, had yeah. some great finds there haven't we? We have indeed. And Oval, that was good wasn't that it? That was really good and you know what's interesting as well is of course the station's gone through so many upgrades and changes and we know of another station that has the Northern Line and then the Victoria Line and it has, has gone through a lot of similar. In fact there's a rather excellent tour there oh, isn't yes. there? Oh yes, Euston. Euston. Yeah. So 
there's a lot of interesting stuff we think to find here. There's louver doors to go and have a look behind. Mm -hmm. There's things that we can see on this uh, this older plan of the station. Yeah. So shall we? Yeah. Let's we've go downstairs. Not, we've not been here before. This is going to be first-hand exploration. Genuinely new for us too. So off we go. Let's, Let's go do and it. explore. Well, this looks promising. Yeah. Now this is exciting because there's some original fabric here. It's about the right size. Do you want to do the honours? Yes. Love these moments. Oh, hello. Oh, Talk. it's stuck. Oh, light switch. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my goodness. Now look these at are 20s that. tiles. Oh wow, look at this. So we've seen some of this stuff before. It's pretty familiar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got these uh, banister rails here. Yeah. So some rails. solid, solid wood, that. It is. And what else? If we look at these, look at these tiles, actually. Yeah. Let's just have a quick look, because uh, I think straight away, well, these is the we know these what these are. If yeah. I get the torch out, what do you reckon? Yeah. They're, oh, yeah, definitely magnetic. Yeah. Sorry, they're metal tiles, and therefore you can stick a torch on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all from the 1920s upgrade to the Northern Line to make it uniform with the Charing Cross, Euston, and Hampstead. Seen them in plenty of places. We have. It's they're normally, these are quite bland, though, compared to, they normally have them in green and sometimes blue. They are quite subdued, aren't they? I yeah. mean, you can see straight away the metal tiles because you've got rust coming out mm. where the enamel's chipped away. But these ones, of course, aren't. Oh, hang on, that one. <laughs> I'm there thinking, oh, they aren't, but it's the border tiles yeah. that are ceramic. But you're right about the dullness. I think some of it is grime. Uh, yeah. But there's no colours as far as we can see, are there? No, these are kind of brownie, brownie colour. These are brown. Right, well, let's go and see what else we can find. Mm. Should be spiral stairs. Or something. Or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. I think this might be a torch moment. Yeah, I think we're going to need all the torches for this, aren't we? Oh, so, right. This is... <laughs> wow! <laughs> the ventilation point. Oh. oh, my word. Okay, let's, uh, let's just show our viewers what we're marvelling at. <laughs> that so is Manchester, right? This is the right? old emergency spiral staircase of the city in South London. We recognise th these um, these cast iron segments, right? Because they're these kind of blocky, rectangular ones. They're big ones, aren't yeah. they? They're sort of at least twice the size of a normal segment that you might find in a tunnel. Uh, and then, <laughs> you know. I, I think we find ourselves for the first time in a while, City, on a catwalk. Oh, wow! <laughs> Our old favourite of realising that we're oh standing my... over <gasps> a big drop. Dear That is Lord. deep! Okay, we're going to try our best here, dear viewer, to give you a view through there. Ooh. Not an easy one. I don't think we're going to be... There you go. I think... I... Oh, there you go. It's just got it. Wow, that's... Oh. <laughs> and now we're picking up Breeze. Oh, that's almost like the one at uh, Charing Cross, isn't it? Yeah. Should we, should we push on through yeah, uh, to the other side? Oh yeah, always nice to see a bit of daylight. Oh, it's sunny outside, everyone. Windy, but sunny. <laughs> so, shall we push yeah, on through Yeah, let's push here? on through. <sighs> right. Come on. Ooh, I'll light this up for you. Okay, through we go. Now, of course, a lot of the original station was brick built. Yeah. Uh, they, the city and South London Railway did like to use brick, as well as cast iron in their construction. Uh, so it's a bit hard to tell. <laughs> it's a bit hard to tell. Uh, but we are definitely in the lift shaft here. And wow, yeah. Oh my goodness, there's so many things to take in here. Let's start off with just demonstrating it's a lift shaft. Yep. And I'll and get some light on that. And the brick structure that's right next to these cast iron segments is the escalator shaft, kind of that's coming right. straight through. Yeah, so that's what we just came down 
on the escalator. So this is a bit like oval, isn't it? It's mm. one of these, what, 25 foot diameter? Big, big shaft. Lift shafts, yeah. yeah. Two big 50 person lifts inside. Yeah. But the bit that I'm loving, we are big fans of fans, aren't we? We love fans. And, uh, and here's a pressure fan. Yeah, this is a massive one. Yeah, this one. one's big. There's the motor. But and here, see, very is... cute speed controller for it. Yeah. But it is out of service. We've got one very similar to that in the museum collection yeah. at Acton. Oh, they go even, oh, I love seeing these. DC supply, AC supply. Gosh, so this one, this is quite an ancient one, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, 40s? Yeah, I mean, these are, uh, we've got similar things in the uh, deep level shelter at Clapham yeah. that were installed in the 40s. So yeah, 30s, 40s onwards. Mm -hmm. Wonder why it's no longer in use, probably not needed. Possibly so, or there might be a more modern uh, one mm. elsewhere. It's possible that the fan is still in use, but the speed controller isn't controlling it anymore. Yeah. That's, the other, that's the other possibility, but it's just not hot enough to have it on today. Gosh, this lift shaft, it's, like you said, it's like the one at Oval, but it's so big in terms of just how wide it is compared to others on, say, the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead or, or any of the other lines, really. Absolutely. It's kind of, it, it, it's quite <laughs> mind-blowing that they were powered by hydraulics. Huh. There right. We go. Well, I think we've gone as far as we can here. Yes, we have. Right, let's go back out through. Right, so we have descended to have a look at the vent shaft. Wow. It's one of the bigger ones, isn't it, Sids? This is very unusual. It's huge, actually. Vast. It's about, it's double the size of the one at Euston. Uh, and oh, as you were just spotting, it's got 1967 on the uh, side, so that tells us. Mm -hmm. This is the Victoria Line edition. So 66, 69. Dude. Now, of course, Stockwell um, didn't get added to the Victoria line until the 70s, early 70s. Yeah, 71, so I think, wasn't yeah. it? So, I mean, there's an obvious Ooh. route on, shall and we? And there's a portal up there. <laughs> Let's go and find out where it leads. Gosh, and look at all this debris that gets blown in from yeah. here. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of old cable and strands of wire and so on. Wow. Heavens above. <laughs> oh, I thought the one at Euston was impressive. Right, oh my gosh. Well, let's see what we've got. Yeah. Oh, I can hear trains, so we should probably just be careful with light. Yeah, I think that's. Yep. Okay. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's have a little explore, shall we? Yeah. It's massive. It's vast. I mean, this this is very much like Euston to me. But oh heavens! Ah, that must be the one that links through to the uh, other side of the vent chamber. Oh right. Uh, that looks spooky. It does. It all looks pretty spooky. Does indeed. It's pretty spooky, hangout fam. <laughs> and look at all this. See, if if the UK did do, you know, if you were, you you'd be able to return cans and bottles for <laughs> for, for some money. There like, are quite a lot. We'd uh, we'd have a good twenty quid here. Well, this is just line side litter, well, you know, that's got blown in. That's another vent out onto the track. God, but look at the cavern over there. Oh, I mean, it's vast. So it? I think, actually, hang on a sec, Sid. I'm just going to take the light off because um, I can hear there are trains around you see that? and shine straight on. I think that's oh, the God. original city in South London uh, nice. double brick built tunnel. What do you reckon? Yeah, it looks like it's it is. in the right place because it's to the north yeah. and the lights down. Careful. Oh, other track. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm going to hop up. Lights down. 
Yep, it is. Oh, my word, Sids. If you look up oh. there, can you see the tiling? I don't think I can get it. Yeah. There we go. That's got it. That's but incredible. This is, but this is, isn't this the Victoria Line, though? Uh, it's parallel running, though, isn't oh. it? So they're realigned. So if I'm really careful between trains and I get that light up there, well, that was definitely worth coming to find, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know about you, I wasn't expecting to see no, that today. No, me neither. Wow. So the one that we're hearing, that's the Victoria Line on another part. That's right, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, I think this has been one of my favourite little finds in a while. Uh, yes, it's a big enormous grimy dark space in the ground but just finding that uh, extra bit of uh, the original station I think is great and yeah well this is all um, like you said this is just to ventilate the running of the of the line the running tunnels it is and, I, and of course really until the Victoria line got built they there wasn't really proper yeah. ventilation built in was there? ever since this kind of stuff has been done but this is what it takes mm. to make your journey more comfortable and that's bearable, correct. isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. And you see, it's clearly not meant for people to be in here because there's just drainage. It's all about getting water out into the sump. Yep, water and air. That's all that's ever designed to come down here, apart from us, of course. It's enormous. <laughs> I, I had no idea there was this much here. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. You and I have used this station for many years. Yeah. And, uh, until we popped we through recently and thought, oh, there's some grill doors. <laughs> we haven't yeah. really explored. And then that's just, uh, that's the so the day we did Oval Station, mm -hmm. uh, I overshot the station and had to go back. And so oh, yeah. I found myself just here and looking at these and thinking, hmm, I think I know what might be on the other side of those. Hmm. Should we? Uh, yes. <laughs> What do you reckon then? What? Should we pop the lights on? And this is what I saw. <laughs> that is the face of a happy Holloway. Uh, so, if you haven't already worked it out, dear viewer, well, this, here are some massive floodgates. Yep. This massive. used to be one of the entrances into the deep level shelter here at That's Stockwell. Well. So, let's just uh, pause here for a second. Whoa, okay. Weird layout, weird, weird connection point. It's a really unusual one, the layout here. And also just look at this infrastructure. The floodgates were a later addition, of course. They weren't built like that originally. Yeah. And uh, the, particularly because there's, uh, there's a lot of water in the ground around here. Mm. Oval had the same problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the Ephra Brook, which runs through water bearing uh, ground through yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So the strata is quite waterlogged, so very sensible to have those. I've been into the deep shelter many years ago. Yeah. I've been in through the other side, but I've never been into this bit. Do you want to? Yes, I do want Let's to. Let's go down. Wait, I see a... Um, a <laughs> another light. An another Very light. Good. Now, of course... It should be capped off, it's, right? That's right. It's sealed off from this side. Um, so we're only going to get to explore the passageways that went from the station. That's uh, pretty cool. It's worth doing, right? Look at this. So these uh, tunnel lining segments are just yeah, amazing, well, aren't they? This is intricate stuff. And also this curve wouldn't have been ideal, but I guess this is the only way they could fit it in here. Yeah, because it loops back yeah. up to the other side. Uh, of and the, straight underneath. Uh, yeah, that's right. So it goes around to the other Northern Line platform. Oh, wow. Oh. This is Massive. <laughs> Huge, isn't it? For a bit of Dishy's real estate, it's quite astonishing. We have to go down there. We have to go of down there. Of course we do. We can't leave it here. Well, I mean, we could, but people would be annoyed. I would be annoyed. <laughs> Shall I do that? She's like, no, 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 I'm sorry, we have to leave. Oh, well, we recognize this type of stuff, don't we? We do. Uh, wherever so you have spare space on the underground, you cram stuff in, but These look are at that. Concrete lining segments, just like the ones we have at Clapham South. Yep, same markings, the T. Wow. So, 
as ever with these things, they started building in the available cast iron, and then, and then once the concrete over. started arriving, they switched over. Switcheroo. Well, I think if we go down there, we're going to find a door we can't go through. It's a, a CR. Uh, well, then we can't go through. So we can go and do it from the other side, though, because there's a door on the other platform. So we can go around and have a look at the other side of it. Wait, but where's so, the entry into the shelter itself? Well, the entry to the shelter would have been further down there. Ah. Now, we can't get through because yeah. that's now an equipment room, but there is the door off the other platform. So we should go and do that one, right? So yes. you can get in that way. Right, so here we are on the other side. And well, I mean, there's no need to ask where you are because somebody's written it in chalk. Deep shelter. <laughs> right, wow. let's go and have a look. Yeah. Again, another, another big door. Yeah, some very wide um, concrete. Uh, concrete segments Even, here as well. I kind of, these, it sort of smells like deep shelter. This door, I'm going to say yeah, that's an original because it's very similar to the ones we see at Clapham yeah. South. As you say, we've just come through another flood, flood defence door. <laughs> They're really making sure that everybody knows, aren't they? It's definitely a deep shelter. It's right. just so incredible that this... Oh, this, um, even this kind yeah, of the, drainage the... grill in the floor is a bit like the one we see at Clapham South, or this one's made slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chris. Oh. Look, even we've even got the red handrails. Oh, wow, yes. Yes, well done. Yeah, those are a, those red handrails are definitely a feature of the deep shelter. level shelters. Oh, it is toasty in here it's everybody. so hot it is practically a sauna and unfortunately that's where it's also an equipment room so we can go no further and this is why we know that the entryway into the deep level shelter here is sealed off very much so it would be um a huge liability for the station to have an active entrance into the deep shelter just because it would enlarge the um, site that the, the supervisors would have to be patrolling by like it, you it, know well, a, a mile absolutely and it would also massively complicate it for fire and mm -hmm. wind purposes wow well that was fun that's been really fun um, there's one last bit that we need to go and look at on the Victoria line platform I think Oh. Yeah, All shall right. we? Lead Let's go. Away. All right, last bit. Bit of art. Oh, of course. By Abram Gaines. The uh, Victoria line, well, designed tiles, I guess. Indeed. So and this what? one is called Swan. Do you know ah, why? Ah, because there's a <laughs> swan here. It's a very uh, Abram Gaines yeah. piece of work, isn't it? That kind of angular pattern, making animals out of shapes. Very interesting. Do you know why it's called the Swan, though? There used to be swans here. There's a pub nearby called the Swan. Ah, there you go. And there you go. We're Ooh. done at Stockwell. Oh, heavens above. OK, so it was a deep shelter. All that history from 1890 gets overwritten in 1920s. Then the Vic line comes along. All that ventilation stuff. Laura, what do you make of all that? Unpick it for me. I mean, the, these guys, they found us an onion, right? They found us an onion because there are so many layers going on there. And I love that they were just kind of slowly peeling them back and you think you're kind of maybe at the center and then there's something else that kind of pops out as well. I think my favorite moment was probably when you were talking about the tiles at the beginning. I, it's really hard to tell from the, from the clip, but I know Sidney mentioned it was kind of maybe a brownie maroon color, which you know, you all know is not my favorite, but what, what I particularly love is that that kind of section was so unassuming but beautiful at the same time. And then you walk through to this massive, uh, the old spiral staircase and it's huge and it's vast and it's enveloping. And just that little transition moment was a real wow moment for me. I really enjoyed it. I know, and you know, it's funny, whenever we see those 1920s refurbs of tube stations with the plain white metal tiles, which in themselves kind of mess with my mind, and then those black or sort of off black 
um, uh, border tiles and stuff like that. I still get such a kick of, out of seeing that kind of stuff because it is so utilitarian, but in its own way, it's still beautiful. And then of course we saw those beautiful tiles law on the platform as well, uh, as part of the Victoria line um, design. And again, yeah. each of those stations is so pretty on the Victoria line in like splashes of color. The Vic line has got some awesome tile work. I do really enjoy it. And it's one of the reasons I love riding on that line as well, because um, it, the, you know, the tiles are so fab. But the, um, the Swan is interesting because you could massively be forgiven for just not knowing it was there, which I guess is the whole point of that abstract kind of art. Um, but I really love that it's very angular, as Chris said, just the small beak and the small eye and the white. And then once you've seen it, you can't not see it, which is really, really good. But you could you could be on the train or walk past and just not know. It could just be a lovely uh, tile pattern. But I love I mean, who doesn't love a tile pattern that's um, after a pub? But a pub is synonymous, isn't it, with that kind of community and meeting up with people and connection. So, again, I love that that kind of link with the tile work as well. It's gorgeous. Uh, one question for you, Chris, and I mean, the number of times we've been down these places and I don't dare think about it when I'm there because of, you know, fear and all this kind of thing. Have you ever wondered what would happen if all the batteries failed on all our torches at the same time? Because we get into some very, very dank, dark places a long way away from electric lights sometimes, don't we? Uh, it's true, and I know sometimes you do uh, gently rib me about this, but it's why I take so many darn torches down there. <laughs> was, I'm I never going to get caught out say, like that. Brandy, you do know Nick. He's probably got a like uh, Mr. Gadget belt on with like loads of bears of everything, right? <laughs> you, you know, he's never done though. He's never got us to wear a torch on our heads. I'm oh, up. Right, it's a pencil, though. I, I have I have done that myself though. Uh, so, well, to be honest, if you're going down a ladder uh, or a you know, set of stairs where you need your hands free for either carrying a camera, say, or holding onto the handrails or both, then you know you don't want to be holding a torch as well. So it's incredible. I, uh, I was going to say um, my cautionary tale was from a colleague who went exploring King William Street back in the seventies uh, when torches were a much kind of harder thing to get carry around. And uh, they had exactly that thing happen down there. Uh, lights went out on them when they only had one torch. <laughs> I'm never going to get caught like that. It's incredible. It's incredible. And, and also, you know, when we were talking about the different things that you saw down there, the, the deep shelter, um, because they were such a big part of South London's subterranean design, weren't they? There were so many of them, it feels, down in South London. There were, and I. Um, if people want to know more about the deep level shelters, then you can go back into uh, previous episodes in the um, series one. We talked about uh, Clapham South, for example, which is the one that we we look after, and they're all built along similar designs. So um, that'll help you to understand what this one's like. This one had this very unusual arrangement of um, two sets of stairs, uh, one off each of the Northern Line platforms, which came together and reunited where that uh, uh, where that equipment room was that we we couldn't get into and it's all obviously sealed off now so you can't get into the shelter from there but that's how people would have done uh during wartime chris on a on a scale of one to ten how confused would i have got with the arrangement of this uh of this station it, it's a bit head melty i have to say it's one that's taken me quite a while to get my head around and it's only from uh looking at diagrams that we have in the collection that I was able to sort of piece it together and work out there's definitely enough for us to go and uh, have a look at do, that's do a chris see one of way of saying it's a 10 <laughs> <laughs> it's a big fat 10 yeah chris show us some pics because i'm sure you've come up with some brahmas from this place yeah, so uh, well, let's start. Let's start with a diagram. Let's go with that original. Um, uh, um, can you see that? Yeah. Oh, blimey, that's complicated. Right. So this is um, the original layout of the station uh, from uh, its city in South London uh, days, and you can see there it says platform. And uh, either side of it, you've got track and then there's a scissor crossover and you've got another track running around it and a curve heading off to the top left there. And that's because Stockwell was this southern terminus of the city and South London Railway. So um, it had the depot and it had the power station for the line 
and the hydraulic compressors there for uh, for uh, driving the hydraulic lifts and other hydraulic equipment along the line. So it had this really unusual turnout. Do you remember we talked about King William Street having uh, a really vicious gradient yes. back in series two, where there's a one in 14 on a curve going up into the station. That's one of the reasons it didn't work. Here was even worse. To pull out the locomotives or the carriages for maintenance, they had a one in three and a half gradient. What? To have, yeah, they had to have a hydraulic winding wheel called a capstan, and they would cable haul uh, the locos up. Well, of course, 1907, uh, the inevitable happened. A cable snapped, and they had a runaway uh, runaway train down the uh, down the line. So they then installed a hydraulic lift. They could take either a driving uh, a, a locomotive or a car up in it for maintenance. All of that got swept away uh, in the 20s when the depot was no longer needed and it was sold to the LCC and they built the houses, which are now uh, the flats, which are now sat on top of that area. It's incredible. I just love it. I love this sort of stuff. Show me, show me something else. Let's, at least well, something else. I'm just going to draw attention to one thing. That platform bit that we can see there, that's what we were looking at through the grill when we were in the vent shaft and the tiling that was there um, was the was the bit that you just make out on the film. So that still survives and the trains go through it today. Obviously, no platform. Uh, yeah. Let's just let's have a look at that, shall we? Yeah, because uh, forgive me, because that was another thing that just wowed me when we were looking at the film is that there's so much of it still left. So it's all hiding there. So here's a model of what it looked like. We have this model at the museum at Covent Garden, which is a model of what Stockwell used to look like with its island platform. And you can see the little three car uh, locomotive hall train there and the, the tiling uh, with the station name in it uh, on the back there. Um, we do have an illustration from that era as well. Holy moly, that's awesome. Is this in our collection, Chris? Yeah, this is one of the uh, illustrations in our collection. It, it shows you the train either side of a wooden platform uh, with gas lamps above it. Um, <laughs> dreadful fire hazard. Um, <laughs> you, you can see the impression of the tiling. Uh, on is the this done like just in pencil? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it might be a pen, uh, pen and ink drawing. But just very line based. Isn't that really lovely to look at? And when you look at it as well, you whenever you go to Stockwell now, it's quite a modern looking station, you know, on the street level and down below. It looks it, it looks modern. You, you take a look at a shot like this and it immediately reminds you. It gives you such clear proof that we are looking at one of the oldest stations on the network. And you think this is I mean, it is among the oldest of the tube network on the on the on the system. And I it fascinates me how. We are so lucky to have so many pictures and so many artifacts proving the age of this place. It's, I mean, look at, when you look at pictures like this, you suddenly realize how, and look at the dome for the lift and everything else, mm. water powered lifts as well. There's so much about this line. The fact that the lift shafts are part made of brick because the, at the time they didn't trust metal to be strong enough to withstand the, the weight of a lift. It's just, mind-blowing how how everything has changed how thoughts have changed beliefs on strength and design have changed as well i love it it's such a beautiful little station it is it's a great one and, and this is the photo of that original uh, F uh phillips figgis design of the uh, exterior of the station as you say the the dome over the lift just like we saw when we were at kennington yeah it's absolutely is beautiful. there is there some kind of party going on here with all the bunting yeah, it's my birthday it celebration. It's my birthday. Where's Alex there? <laughs> yeah, pre <laughs> birthday party. Yeah, the bar bill was terrible. <laughs> the thick of it in the melee. I absolutely love it. OK, so this is the diagram which I uh, flashed at the camera when we just started in the station. And you can see down there uh, on the bottom left-hand side what's marked as a vent shaft with the escalators going through it. That's your original lift shaft. And the spiral staircase, as was, was the bit where Sidney and I went exploring. And the original platforms of the city in South London, uh, just to the left, where it says to Edgware on the left, they're just off the side there. So the remodelling of the, the station in the 20s just shifted the platforms uh, to, the, to the south towards, towards Morden. 
heavens above. It is just fascinating, isn't it? I, I never cease to be scintillated by these maps and these uh, design drawings and stuff like that. They're absolutely gorgeous. Platform lengths and main layout checked April. Is it 1939? What does it say there? Uh, where are you looking? I'm Down just... the bottom, but just below the platforms. Um, um, it's, it's right. Platform lengths and main layout. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Oh, maps are your you... thing, aren't they, Alex? You love them. map. Yeah, I love them. I absolutely designs. You know, like floor plans. I've got this thing about, and and I really love. There's a book of them in the museum depot, and occasionally, if we're there, Chris will let me have a leaf through all these different um, station plans from the day before they were even built. They're just amazing. Um, so so cool. Get you always must must go to the depot and have a look around at some of the stuff they've got there if you get the chance. It's just so cool. There's many many open days. It's gorgeous. And then we've got to have a poster for law. I mean, look at this. Just it's a, it's a bold one, isn't it? I do, I do really love a poster where it's got a real primary colour as that kind of pop of energy from the back. Um, and you know, it does what it says on the tin. There's a pair of scissors and we're cutting something. It's very clever. I do like it. I love the shadow as well. And then the little kind of roundel is the middle section of the um, of the scissors. Yeah, the um, screw, the screw that holds. Yeah, together, yeah. They're always there. I love it. I absolutely love it. But as you say, that design is so sort of typical of the sixties and seventies when it comes to poster art, isn't it? It was always kind of drawn symbolism. There wasn't really photographs of things, and perhaps the way it would be now. It's yeah. just it's gorgeous. And they put out so many lovely posters about the opening of the Victoria Line. Design icons, all of them, really. But I um, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for a canter around such an incredible station, Nixie. It's, it was great surprise to us just uh, how much was there. We knew there were bits, uh, but it was great to actually go and explore them and share them with everybody. That was so, so lovely. So, so lovely to see that station and all of its secrets. Um, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much indeed. I think it was a bit of a treat there, Laura, wasn't it? I know we couldn't go on the trip, but it was a bit of a treat. It was an absolute subterranean treat, wasn't it? I don't mind missing the ones where um, I've been before um, or I kind of, I feel like I know what's down there, but I can't lie, a little bit jealous again about this one because I didn't realise there was as much. And um, Chris messaged afterwards and was like, and there was this and there was this. And it was like, no, we missed one of the great explorations again. Um, but lovely to see it all unfold in this episode. And I hope the audience like it as well, because yeah, it's a, a really, really lovely treat when you find something like that. Um, and Siddy and Chris, I think really captured some really lovely moments there. Um, and I'm enjoying Husky Alex. So what more, what more can I say? Do you know, it, it, someone said to me, uh, one of the comments uh, beneath last week's episode on Charing Cross, they said, uh, Alex should do a drinking tour, a Grundon's oh, goodness. booze crawl around the circle line. We should do this as an episode. I can absolutely say today, I am not gonna be touching a drop of alcohol. Until I, 8 p.m. I, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> until I forget about last night and then that'd be fine. Um, some lovely comments as well. Uh, Gaz, well done, Gaz. You've obviously been reading the joke book. Another brilliant episode on Charing Cross. So much to see here, especially the impressive shaft. A little trip down memory lane, seeing the grinder preventing the flange squeal. And that sums it up really, Chris, if you had to do it in a couple of sentences last week. Yeah, I, I liked it last week. It was nice to go back down memory lane with uh, with Sharon Cross. And uh, look, I, I think while your voice is uh, currently husky, I suggest you go and pick up some uh, voiceover work for films. You could do a great uh, coming soon to a theater near you. Carlsberg, probably the best <laughs> lover in the world. That's what you want, isn't it? And um, Patreons, by the way, some really, really cool uh, footage from Stockwell for you. Really good stuff. Uh, the stuff we probably wouldn't show the public, but it is there for you. Chris, how do we find Patreon? Uh, well, go to the museum website, go to the Hidden London tab and find your way through to membership and you can find out how to join there. Lovely stuff. Laura Hilton Brown, thank you so much, you gorgeous thing, for coming and joining us and coming to play today. <laughs> you gorgeous thing <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, I've gone really husky now as well um, absolute pleasure sorry I couldn't be there I'm, just, I'm, I'm flailing behind the scenes trying to work out the September to December plan actually scrap that I'm not flailing I'm doing really well we're getting there 
the team are getting there. It's just, um, it's a little tricky one to get it all signed off before summer um, because obviously it's our Christmas programme, but we're so close. I just couldn't quite make it to good old stocky. Um, but yeah, nice one, really enjoyed it. Huge treat, great onion. Great, on great onion. <laughs> <laughs> great onion, Nick. See, Chris Nix. Thank you, onion. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to follow that. Uh, but um, if uh, if you've enjoyed this look around Stockwell, there's plenty of uh, tours of places that you can visit either in person or virtually. Uh, if you go and have a look at the Hidden London uh, website on the museum's main website. I love it. Thank you so much indeed. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, if you want to find us, do it on Instagram. This is all about pictures and videos. That's where we like to hang out. So Alex Grundon, Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law and at LT Museum on Instagram. You found us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe and comment down below. Places you want us to go, comments you want to make. Nice stuff. Please keep it nice. And we'll be back somewhere really, really cool next week. In the meantime, have yourself a great day and stay safe.